Warning, the following audio transmission is based on theory and is intended for entertainment purposes only. Its Doomsday and its affiliates will not be held liable for anything your dumbass does. Listener discretion is advised. I don't, I don't even want to, I don't even want to podcast today. And I'm never, I'm never like that. I'm usually like in front of this mic. I'm like, let's go. And I'm like ready to rock and roll. Anyway, we're at the studio. I had a good meeting about prep stock for those of you guys uh, that have not heard of prep stock yet. Go to www.prepstock.net for more information. Very few campsites left. There's only a couple left. Uh, Ticket sales are going well. If you do want to attend the event, I would suggest you do because there is over $5,000 of giveaways uh, taking place at PrepStock. So once again, go to www.prepstock.net. And the giveaways are are free. It's free giveaways. We have $5,000 worth of stuff that we're just going to give to you guys um, just for coming to PrepStock. Isn't that cool? It's freaking awesome. So I wanted to get into on the show today just a little bit of the prepper mentality side of the spectrum. I've been so busy lately that it's been really hard for me to sit down and do research and pull topic ideas. It's just been, it's been very annoying and very busy. Uh, and then also with the other show, it's like sucking up a lot of my time. Like when I would normally have that downtime to like read into something or, or you know, pull a rabbit out of my hat, so to speak, for a good show. I've just been kind of unable to do that between balancing two jobs and another show and everything else. But it's Doomsday Podcast Can't Die. Oh, no, 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 because we are survivors. Now, what does that mean when we say that to ourselves? We are survivors. Um, First off, I think it means we're not going down without a fight. Against whatever adversary we may have, we're not going down without a fight. We are not just going to roll over when we are not going to, you know, play possum here or anything. We're, we're going to go down with a fight. We are going to go down kicking and screaming and, you know, you can have it when you pry it from my cold dead fingers type mentality. And with that, there's a lot of different, there's a lot of different scenarios that people are preparing for out there uh, in, in the doomsday prepper community. You'll have people that are preparing for just your straight natural disasters. And I wanted to get into this on the show today because my wife and I just had this conversation about there's so many people out there that are not prepping for the natural disasters. And it's stupid because they're the most frequent thing you're going to deal with. Okay. The wildfire, wildfires, the flooding, the tornadoes, the hurricanes, the earthquakes, the landslides. You know, these are the things that you need to be preparing for all the time. And it's all the same basic stuff. You know, food, water, shelter, security. I mean, it's, it's the same basic things, you know, and the idea of bugging out. When I lived in the state of Florida and they would call for evacuation orders of certain areas uh, due to hurricanes that were coming through, a lot of people were like, nah, we're good, we're staying. You had other people that said, you know what, screw this house, screw this, screw the car, I'm gone. I'm going up north, I'm going here, I'm going there. We got insurance, I am not worried about it. A lot of people had that mentality. But then you had people that had the mentality of like, well, my home is all I have and I want to be here to defend it. 
and I, you know, and if I lose this, I lose everything anyway, so I'm just going to stick around. A lot of people out there have that mentality. Now, there's a lot of people also that have the mentality of I'm not going to do shit. I'm not going to get prepared. I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to worry about anything. I'll deal with it when the time comes, which is a very, very, very bad mentality to have. Okay. Are you looking for something kick ass to add to your closet? Reaper has the hookup for t-shirts, hoodies, button ups, hats, beanies, and plenty of other bad ass products. You can check out Reaper Apparel Company at www.reaperapparelco.com and use code DOOM10 for 10% off. Jester only stands behind brands he believes in, and Dan at Reaper Apparel has a mission, and Jester is on board. Go check out www.reaperapparelco.com today and use code DOOM10 for 10% off your entire order. Why be a sheep when you can reap? Use code DOOM10 for 10% off at www.reaperapparelco.com today. I have known people from all over the country that deal with all kinds of different natural disasters. Okay, you've heard Texas Prepper Mom on the show talking about the Texas freeze which was something they didn't typically had to deal with. And, you know, uh, there was uh, approximately 250 people that lost their lives due to that. And it was all pretty much due to a grid failure situation. When you really break down the Texas freeze and what killed people, it was, you know, there was a lot of people that froze due to a power outage, right? The grid failing is, is what caused a lot of the turmoil and the chaos. <sighs> Excuse me, guys. Got to get some water in there. Starting to dry out. So... If these people had it in their head that, you know, the only thing we need to prep in Texas for is grid failure, and they had backup heat sources, backup cooking methods, backup ways to uh, obtain water, your survival rate would have been higher. Emergency management services in your area pretty much works on a wide-scale capacity. They don't work on the individual level, and people need to start understanding this. Get out of this mentality that emergency services is always going to be there or FEMA is just going to show up. Get out of that mentality. Stop that. It's not good. Also, get out of the get out of the mentality that it's only going to be this one scenario that's going to screw you up. Okay, there's a lot of people that have this mentality of it. It is just going to be a superstorm. It's just going to be a civil war. It's just going to be the collapse of the dollar. It's just going to be an EMP. Everybody has that mentality, and that's not how it works, okay? There are people out there, and I've heard this be a very common thing. Um, I've heard this from a lot more than well, – I've heard this probably from about a half a dozen people. I've heard the same story. Yes, I was a prepper. I'm not anymore because there was a house fire, and I lost everything, and I just don't care to rebuild. I've heard this from people that live in this country. I've heard this from people that live overseas. Uh, I've, I've heard this from multiple people. Now, I get it. Things happen. Accidents happen. You know, it's, it's not in your control. It's totally out of the realm of your control. But I've also heard people utilize this in a way to kind of suck money out of people. Like, feel bad for me. I lost everything. Help me rebuild. Help me buy all these things and, and do these things. I've, I've seen a lot of people do that. Now, you start to wonder to yourself, is, is fire just plugging preppers? And no, it's, it's really not. Shit happens. And there's not much you could prepare to do. There's not much you could do to prepare for a fire. There's really not. If you're at work and you live, say, you know, 45 minutes away from your house, I mean, what are you going to do in 45 minutes if you find out there's a fire? That fire is going to fully involve your house before you make it home to fight it. Your best bet you can do is call the call the fire department and get them out there. You know, if if your house can even alert you that there's a fire taking place because a lot of the times you know, your neighbors see smoke, they call 911, they see flames, they call 911, then fire services are dispatched to your home and then it's only dealt with at that point and by that time the damage is there's so much damage already done. Does that make sense? 
So preparing for fire is one of those things. It's, it's kind of really out of the realm, unless you're one of these guys that has like the, uh, sprinkler system in their house or your house is all made of concrete and you store things in different rooms. So if one room burns, the other one doesn't, I mean, preparing for fire is not something most people are doing. And this portion of this, this episode today is not about that. It's again about thinking outside the box for all these different natural disasters that are taking place. And having you understand that emergency services in your area, they're planning for wide scale things. They're not planning on the individual level. So here's a good example. Your emergency services in your area probably has a really good plan put in place uh, if water's cut off for a long time. They probably have a list of people they're going to call through. They probably have a ton of bottled water that they're going to go pass out for free. Eventually, that time will run out. If there's grid failure, uh, the county does not have an emergency services plan to come out and give you firewood or heat your house. Okay, there's they 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 don't have a thousand torpedo heaters, and they're not going to start passing them out. Like that's not in their emergency services plans. Now, does the county probably have a handful of generators in different various places that they will pass out in order to keep you know, say this one area of town loses power and they need to run a bunch of drop cords. Uh, you know, to get people's oxygen condensers working and stuff like that. Yes, but that's such a limited thing. It is not a wide-scale thing. It's, it's very, very limited, okay? And the fact of the matter is whenever you have these natural disasters, you end up losing a lot of people just due to their health needs can't be met because they are reliant on the grid, all right? And people are not necessarily they don't necessarily share this mindset of what would I do if something goes wrong? Cause if somebody's on oxygen uh, and they need that to, to keep themselves alive, to keep their oxygen stats up, to keep them functional, they're probably not going to be able to go out to the garage and drag out a generator and pull start the thing. And then, you know, get it hooked up to the house and go down to the basement to shut the main off. Like, no, that's going to be exhausting. And doing all this while their condenser is not running. Yes, they probably have a few backup tanks, and most people do. Most people that are on the oxygen condensers have a, a few backup tanks in the event of a power outage. But those only last for so long, okay? And if you have a wide-scale outage, you know, emergency services is going to pick up the slack to an extent, but there's only so much they can do. All right, emergency services jobs in the event of crisis management is to to basically show up, make sure you're good, or get you out of harm's way. It's not a long-term thing. If your house gets taken out in a disaster, emergency management isn't going to come back and rebuild your home for you. They are simply going to get you out of the home if you're screwed up and you're stuck in there. And then what they're going to do is they might have a local shelter set up in in town, maybe at like a community building, maybe at like the local high school gymnasium. You know, they will have a plan in place. That's their job, but it's not on an individual level. That's your job. And whenever you have people say, well, I'm just prepping for the EMP. I don't need to worry about the tornado. Okay, no, 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 no. You do, though. You do. Natural disasters are more likely to happen than a terror attack, and they happen every year, and they happen in such quite frequency that you think everybody would be getting on board for this, but they're not, and I mean, here's, here's a great example of this. Uh, <laughs> we allow people to still bid, build homes in floodplains. Now, one would think that that's just kind of counterproductive that we're building in active flood zones and we would think when we get our insurance rates we would say hey maybe this is a bad idea but people still do it and it's just that you know this whole i'm untouchable mentality and i think that's why a lot of people don't put the effort into prepping they don't put the effort into disaster preparedness or anything like that mainly because they're like nah it can't happen to me and then it does and then they're like well now what do i do well now it's kind of it's kind of too late. You're, you know, you're in the shit now. It, you can't get out of it. And I think that's why a lot of people listen to the show. Because, you know, it's it's so funny. The listeners reach out to me on, on different various platforms and things. And a lot of these guys are like set up preppers. I mean, some of them are set up way better than I'm set up. And it's crazy when it's like, why are you listening to this show? You probably know more than I do. 
Maybe it's just to hear somebody speak on these things that's like-minded. I don't know. <laughs> but I learn things. I talk to listeners, and I learn things that I didn't know. And the, that's something that's very interesting about the prepping community, going to the events, coming to prep stock, and um, you know, doing these different events. It's like you'll meet someone. And you'll start talking about a subject and you'll have like the same ingredients on, you know, like maybe water filtration or, you know, what the good brand fire starter is to carry and things like that. But then you'll hear someone go off the wall and say something that you've never, ever thought about. And it makes so much freaking sense. It's unreal. And the last uh, moment I had like that was we had uh, the Angry American on the show. We had Chris Weatherman, the author of the Going Home series books. And... He's like, yeah, I've been, te- I've been telling people, you know, they need to put a, uh, a valve in their septic line. That way, if everybody else in the neighborhood septic backs up, it's not backing up into your house. You have some control over that. And I'm like, wow, I never would have thought of that. Like, and I, my father had a plumbing company for years and I worked with him for years plumbing, but I never once thought of that. So that's what's really cool about interacting with these people that have all these different kind of prepper-esque mentalities and these, these different ideas. It's like there's like these little things that are just, you know, that's not that hard. You know, you spend a day outside digging up the septic line and, you know, you put a nice little fitting in there with a nice little valve or whatever you plan on doing. It's like, boom, you're good to go. I never would have thought about that. How cool is that? Anyway. Fire is one of the most basic essentials for survival. Whether you're camping, hiking, or preparing for disaster, Blackbeard has your six. Go to www.blackbeardfire.com and utilize code DOOMSDAY for 10% off your entire purchase. Blackbeard offers stormproof matches, plasma arc lighters, fire starters, and ferro rods, all of which are great for your bug out bag. Once again, go to www.blackbeardfire.com and utilize code DOOMSDAY for 10% off your entire purchase. To keep the show moving forward, uh, guys, getting other people on board for the prepping and and the mentality of things is, is a very difficult thing to do. I've been doing it for years trying to get people better prepared it and what i found is there is there is like little to no instant gratification for being a prepper there there really isn't so is a good example of this i'm always the guy that has jumper cables in the vehicle i'm always that guy i'm always the guy that has a roll of paper towels i'm always that guy that has a few bottles of water and different things in the event of of some kind of crisis on the road i've got things that i need And I've always, you know, I'm always the guy with the jumper cables or the screwdriver or something helping someone else out. And what I've come to find is most people out there uh, do not carry these items and they do not want to carry these items. And it's like, dude, you don't own jumper cables. Like you don't keep these in your car. And it's like, no, I, you know, the frequency I need a jump for my car is like few and far between. And somebody usually has cables, so I don't have to worry about it. That's cool. That's, that's awesome. You know, good for you. But the circumstances I've been in, I'm the one that's usually providing the jumper cables and providing the jump for someone's vehicle. I'm the guy that has the tow strap in there in case I get stuck or in case somebody else gets stuck. And I think a lot of the times for some of these people, you have had to go through that bad example to know that you need it to know that you need to be prepared for it. I I had a conversation uh, with my son maybe, I don't know, a couple months back, and it was like, you know, the idea of he didn't want to get a driver's license because he doesn't have a car yet and he doesn't see the need to have it. Like his mentality was he kept telling me he didn't want to get a driver's license until he had a car. And I'm thinking in my head all these different circumstances where you could potentially need that driver's license. Like let's say you're you're at a party One of your friends is drinking, you're sober, and he's trying to drive. You could say, hey, dude, I have a license. I could drive your car so you don't risk getting, you know, hurt or in an accident or hurting somebody else. Like, you have that power to do that. Or there's an idea, you get a job and you might be required to operate a company vehicle and they want you to have a driver's license. Um, Again, great reason to have a driver's license, right? You may decide... uh, 
you know, that you and your buddy are, are going to go door dashing together and he's going to do half the driving and you're going to do half the driving and you guys are going to split the money. Okay, there's, there's a thousand different circumstances out there of why this is good to have and be prepared for. But if you can't see, if you can't see it in the immediate moment, if you can't see it right there and get that instant gratification out of what you're doing, a lot of people just won't do it. There is no forethought for the future, which is why, just coming back and bringing this full circle, this is why people are not preparing for these natural disasters um, that can happen. Because there's no instant gratification. There's no instant gratification of having six cases of water in your closet because it just sits there. You know, and very little people get instant gratification out of being prepared. I do, believe it or not. I go out and I buy a new prepper item. Like, say I go out and I buy a case of uh, pinto beans to add to the food stocks, right? Say I go and I do that. Well, that's like giving me gratification because I'm analyzing in my head what is in that, on that shelf. I know the things I could make out of those pinto beans, how many years I have to do it. If something goes wrong, I don't have a way to heat them. I could eat them right out of the can. I know this is going to fill my kids' bellies up and they're all going to be good and happy and have a full stomach. Like I, I get the gratification instantly whenever I buy that item and I put it in there. And some people are like, oh, that's hoarding. No, it's not. It's preparation is what it is. Most people do not have, you know, they're not geared for this. Okay, they're just, they're not. And the idea that people are ignoring a lot of these circumstances is very bad. You know, a lot of people, just to circle back to this EMP thing, a lot of people say to themselves, well, that's the one thing we really need to worry about is an EMP because it'll send us back to the Stone Age. And that's the only thing I really need to be worried about. You are so much more likely to have, I don't know, say hail damage on your vehicle or, you know, have high winds come through and tear your shingles off your house. You're, you're more likely to have something like that happen than the EMP, even though the EMP is like way more detrimental. But it's like we're not prepping for these things, right? Like you're not, you're, you don't go out and build a carport in the event you might get hail once a year. You don't have a couple extra bundles of shingles in the garage because, you know, you might get high winds. But if you're in an area that's tornado prone, you probably have that emergency weather radio. You probably have a couple emergency blankets in case the heat gets knocked out. Okay. You probably take the time to board up your house in different circumstances. All right. If you have a wood burner, you're not chopping wood the day it gets cold. You're probably doing that in advance. Okay. So again, this, this episode tonight is mainly just full of tangents in regards to the prepper related stuff. I can't stress enough to, if you do not prepare, it's to your own detriment. I can't stress that enough, especially if you're a person that lives in an area that is prone to having issues, prone to having tornadoes, prone to having hurricanes. And even when I lived in Florida and I saw, you know, the, um, the hurricane madness sales where people just went and bought up everything, they'd return it the very next day. Nobody, very little people were stocking up on like things like survival food or stocking up on bottled water. Like very few people did that. You know, very few people had hurricanes. My neighbor, when we got smack with that last one, Man, my neighbor, he went out, he had an underground propane tank installed with a generator because we lost power for a week. And he says, I will never go through that hell again. And this is an older gentleman. And I remember, you know, just kind of thinking to myself, well, dude, you've been through hurricanes before. Why now? Why after so many now is it like the big issue? You know, what happened this go round that you were like, screw this. This is not worth it. You know, what had happened to you to where you were like, I'm done. And what was crazy, specifically in our neighborhood, is half the neighborhood lost power, the other half didn't, and then the other half lost water, and the other half didn't. So in my house, we had water, but we didn't have power. Okay? A few streets down, they had power, but no water. Now, because of so much damage that was done, it took them a week to get the power back online. I don't know how long it took for the water. Want to be a guest on the show? Email it's doomsdaypodcast at gmail.com. That's it's doomsday podcast at gmail.com 
but it's it's none of these two circumstances are in, are the same. That's why again you you just you go back to the food, water, shelter, security. That's why you go back to that because that covers so many bases. And there are people out there that have this really weird mentality of like one is enough, like this is all I need to do. And when I say that, it's like people are like, yeah, I'll, I'll get a case of water, I'll be all right. Okay, what if you get what if things get worse though why not have two cases of water man why not have a way to collect and filter water why not have a way to make yourself a hot meal you know and some people have it figured out very simplistically they're like dooms i don't need a generator i don't care about that i got plenty of can- canned goods to, to cook up if things go bad in the fridge i'll just toss them i don't care um if i have to take a bath using rainwater collection with a bucket that's fine And I've got a barbecue grill with a bunch of propane tanks. If I want to heat up food, I've got plenty of propane on the grill. And it's like, all right, if that's your plan, dude, that's your plan. It's not a good long-term plan, but it's, it's a plan. So that's good. But just remember that it's nobody else's job to take care of you. That's your job. You weren't put on this planet to be somebody else's burden. You weren't put on this planet... For somebody else to undertake the responsibility of taking care of you. That's your parents' job. Then when you become an adult, it's not their job anymore. That's your job. You get what I'm saying? And I understand fully that some people are in a position where they're more fortunate and they can do more in in the realm of preparing for things than other people can. But it all starts with the idea and the mentality because I know preppers that are broke and I know preppers that go to thrift shops and they thrift prepper items, um, and they repurpose items, okay? I knew one person that would take uh, used tuna fish cans, wash them, and paint them, and utilize them as tea light, candle, tea light candle holders to not get wax all over the place. And then what they would do is they would get tea lights whenever they'd see them in bulk or they'd be at the resale shop or there's a, a sale on them or whatever. And when shit hits the fan, their whole mentality uh, of how they're going to light their home is tea lights and painted tuna fish cans. And I'm like, wow, that's pretty ingenious. That's like the cheapest candle holder you're going to get because you're going to throw it away anyway. Paint's cheap, right? So this is a really good, solid idea, you know? And that's something that most people wouldn't think about, but the thrifty prepper does. And that's really cool. So repurposing things is a really good idea. And and we've talked before that prepping doesn't really come with a price tag. There's a lot of people who are on a budget that have a huge food stock because they buy their canned goods at the Dollar Tree or they only shop at, say, Aldi's where things are discounted and they can get a lot of stuff cheap, right? And there's that. There are these dollar store preppers. And I've been in homes and have seen people's uh, supply Stop, like, there's a lot more people out there preparing for things than you think there are. Um, my job currently allows me to go into people's homes, and you see things while they're in there. And, you know, d- doing the, the work I'm doing, you see different parts of the home that might be a little bit weird to, to for the average person to be in. Like, your cable guy is not going to go into someone's bedroom, but me showing up trying to help somebody in a first responder capacity, I might see the inside of their bedroom. And I'll have you know, I've seen closets full of food. Like these people are preparing, they're getting ready for something. And I don't ask questions. I don't ask what they're preparing for or what, you know. I don't ask those questions. I'm here to help. I'm going to do my job and then uh, I'm going home. I'm getting out of here. You know, glad I could be of service. I'll see you later. And that's it. But you notice these things while you're there. You know, you pick up on these things. You, you notice different things that suggest, okay, this person's preparing. Um... And I, uh, you know, going back in the day, and even when I was, you know, working with my dad and we were plumbing houses, uh, you know, I saw a lot of people back in the day. I don't see them anymore. Maybe it's just the area that I'm in. But, man, I saw so many root cellars that were just filled to the brim with canned items. And it seems like I don't see those as much anymore. But back in the day, when I was younger and I was working, you know, with my dad a lot, I saw so many root cellars and so many produce that people stocked up in their home. And that's, that's what it was. And what's crazy is, and I think that 
I think that we as a people, we get smarter when we get older in the realm of this survival and prepping and things like that. Because we've seen trends, we've seen cost of things. There's a lot of older people out there that have this mentality of if it's on sale, buy a shit ton of it because it's only going to go up with inflation. You know, and certain things just do not go bad. Like if you're if you're at Walmart and you happen to see that laundry detergent is on sale, by all means, buy some extra because you're going to use it before it goes bad. Right. I mean, that's just the reality. And last time I checked, that shit does not have an expiration date on it. So you could buy that stuff in bulk when you see it on sale and let, like let it sit in a closet somewhere. It's fine. You know, and I would see people do this. The older people do this back in the day. They'd coupon and they'd stock up on things. Nowadays, it's like, nope, our our younger generations would, would not like to do that. They would just like to, you know, go to the store every day for the things that we need. And I think that <laughs> I think that we have uh, – society as a whole to blame for that because we all got in the habit of milk egg milk eggs and bread all the time run to the store for milk eggs and bread all the time not a way to preserve milk or buy milk that's longer shelf life like i buy goat's milk you know the one thing i like about it it's got a longer shelf life than regular milk that could sit in the fridge for a long time and it's good to go anyway ladies and gentlemen i hope you enjoyed this episode of its doomsday podcast today i really pulled this show out of my butt today um, it's been a crazy day. It's been a crazy week, 13 days in a row of work. One of those days being a volunteer day. And, uh, after this, I have to run to the store for the milk, egg and bread or milk, eggs and bread. And then I am going home to record another show. Uh, cause we're just oh so busy. Don't forget about prep stock. Go to www.prepstock.net for all the information you may or may not want to know. And we will see you guys back here with another brand new it's doomsday podcast. Have a great week. everybody. This is an emergency action message. At approximately 1 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, Nora is tracking 15 ICBM nuclear missiles inbound to the following cities. Orlando, Miami, Pittsburgh, Dover, Newark, Richland, Philadelphia, New York City, Baltimore, Los Angeles, Las Vegas, Boston, Seattle, Detroit. This is an extremely deadly situation. Stay tuned, the next emergency message will be a presidential address.